This piece is written by a very old man, and it's like a summary of his life in a terribly desperate time during his last years, describing his psychological, musical, and uh, biographical situation a little bit. And there is a strange rumor about one theme among musicians and music lovers. He has a nice four note theme, which are four chords, very beautiful. But then he brings a second idea, and I sing it quietly. And he brings it already a little different. And at the end, before the piece completely sinks into nirvana, you have the mystery solved. It starts and everybody says, oh, he's stealing from Beethoven. A man like Strauss, who has written thousands and thousands of pages of music, doesn't have to steal three notes. But he says himself, he wrote this theme, and during the composition he got aware that he was really quoting not the full melody. So at the end, he did the full chord, and it makes great sense, because it's the main theme of a funeral march. And so the whole piece can see, be seen also of the funeral for whole epoch. To play it is very interesting. It's a challenge for all string players who are not first stand players. If you look at a string orchestra or an orchestra, you have the leader of first violins, leader of seconds, leader of violas, cello, leader of double basses. And you have first violins, and they all play the same as the concert master. The second violin play all the same of the concert. In this piece, you have ten violin parts. Everybody playing something different. So you find out during the rehearsals that you are much more challenged to be your own than in a normal symphony, yet also very much invited to be in combinations with many different people. And for instance, to explain how difficult it might be, if the concertmaster here and in seven meters distance, the fourth viola are playing the same thing, they have to play together, which is rather awkward, difficult, and unused. So you need the first rehearsal just to get uh, uh, used. But the piece is so fascinating and beautiful that everybody is taken in so much that you, you don't feel this disadvantage. And it's a very interesting idea of Strauss to get beyond symphony playing. It's like a collective individualism, which is a contradictio, but it's really that, and it makes the music more felt in all fibers. Every fiber of this music is filled with personal life. And it's one of the great pieces, and I'm happy that you could do it. Great challenge. This piece is far from normal. It's called Gran Partita, as the only piece he called like that, for a reason. It's really grand. When a serenade was about 18 minutes or 20 minutes, this one is, and this is a warning, 15 minutes, 5-0. So we have seven movements, but it's the Himalaya of wind chamber music. And it's since then, since it was known, known as one of the grand pieces of this repertoire. More famous than other, because there is this movie, Amadeus, which was released about, do I know, 30, 40 years ago, and which, in my opinion, with all controversy around it, did more to make Mozart popular than many, many generations of musicologists who work assiduously, but nobody reads them. So we have this piece, 
described by a desperate Salieri, who was Mozart's counterpoint in Viennese musical life. Salieri was a real settled, very prominent, rich, successful composer at the court of the emperor. And Mozart was this newcomer from Salzburg, was a funny young man who made jokes about everything, about composers, about Salieri. And Salieri comes into a room where they rehearse one piece of this grand partita, the third movement, the slow movement. And in his words, oh, it's like a rambling little countryside thing. And then all, all of a sudden, about a couple of hours later, the oboe comes in with a melody which is like given by God. It's heaven descending on earth. And then he's completely, of course, completely fascinated, completely desperate, because he sees what is really genius. The whole movie is seen as a real opening for people who do not know about or not or know a lot or do not listen to it, just to invite them, entice them, to want to get more. And I think it has done very good for all our audiences over generations now. For the wind players, and I come back, it's now the challenge for the wind players is strenuous. It's wind playing is a, a sport, very limited, but it's a sport of muscles. And those muscles get tired, lips get tired, cheeks get tired. Now this is like playing tennis uninterruptedly for 15 minutes, so you don't get to rest. And they were heroes to sit this through in good spirits with good musicality and all the enthusiasm they had. And I hope you can feel it. But it's an admirable piece and I believe it's very well played by great musicians. So enjoy this.